ladies and gentlemen, my name is April and you're welcome back to my YouTube channel if you are a returning viewer and if you are new here then of course you should know what to do. Definitely subscribe to my channel if you like the kind of videos that you see there, right? And also like this video before we even proceed into this video, make sure you hit that like button. So guys, I once again have a guest. Uh, his name is Steven and he is a law student at KUST, that is Tech. He is also the current LSU president at the Tech Law School. And today we are going to be talking basically about his background and his experience as someone who had a first degree and decided to study law at KUST. I just want to first and foremost find out, you already have a first degree, that's right, before that's right. you opted to study law at the KUST Faculty of Law. That's right. So can you just tell us a bit about your background, uh, everything starting, I, I should say even from senior high school. That's right. I started my senior high school at Osei Chichi Secondary School, it's in Kumasi. Okay. So from there, I did general arts. So I did um, history, government, economics, and um, e-maths. Oh, yeah, that's, okay. that's, that was my combination then. So after high school, I proceeded to a private university called Ghana Technology University College. Mm, yeah. I think it's at Tessano. It. Yes, it's here in Accra, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's where I did my first degree. I did business administration and I branched into HR during my third year. And from GTUC, I did my national service at Parliament House. And uh, I, I worked here at the HR office as a, na a national service personnel. And I, after that, I worked in parliament as a research assistant for two years. Then in 2018, I decided to apply for law school. For law school. Yeah, for the faculty of law. <laughs> again. Yeah. yeah, for the faculty of law. Yeah. Sure. Was this a sudden decision that, okay, you know, at this point in your life, you want to study law, or is it something that you've always wanted to do? Well, uh, let me let me share a short story. I was supposed to do uh, law as my first degree, oh, okay. uh -huh, but there, there was a mismatch somewhere, so we, that couldn't go according to plan. Yes, yeah, so I did uh, sociology and economics at Spiritan University. Spiritan oh. is a seminarian university. I did okay. that for a semester before I left to GTUC. Oh, okay, so okay. you tried out something else exactly. before before okay. I, st I studied at GTUC. Yeah, so that's that's the path uh, along that line. And from there, I came to um, uh, Parliament House to do my national service. Yes. So yeah, it's been a journey, and I should also chip in that um, with student leadership. I was also an SRC president oh. at GTUC. Yeah, so, so this has been your reputation for a while kinda, now. Kinda, yeah, kinda. So, okay, interesting. Yeah. So it means it was in your plans to study law. That's what you wanted to do. Oh yeah, yeah. And whilst I was doing my national service, you know, doing your national service at Parliament House, mm -hmm. you're surrounded by members of, course, of Parliament, yes. and it's a law-making body. So you you get inspired by what they do. I was often at the chamber to listen to proceedings, arguments, stuff like that. And it was very interesting. I, I found that intriguing. So, uh, yeah. So I had, I had a, right. other colleagues here too who also uh, opted to do to law. To study law? Yeah. Oh, so wow. After two years, I just decided to start the law. Okay, yeah. interesting. So, how was the application process for you like? Um, as someone with a first degree, I would suppose it's different from the undergrads. From the undergrads applying mm. to... Can you see faculty it's, of law? It's, it's not quite different yeah, because it's it's an undergraduate program. Yes. Regardless, uh -huh, even if you have a first degree. Yes. So you either apply as a regular student straight from high school, mm -hmm. or as a first degree holder, you buy the forms at the post office. You attach photocopies of your results and other institutions you've you've um, attended, attended yeah. exactly. You also attach your high school, even though your, well. yeah, your high school results, wow. <laughs> yeah, even though you're, you're a first degree holder, yes. And you attach all that, then you post it, then later on the uh, application letter comes okay. that you've been picked and that you have to write an entry exam and you have to go through an interview at the faculty. So okay. yeah, dates will be given then. That's what we did. 
Okay, so in terms of the exam, mm. what was it like? Did you prepare in any way? Did they even give you a brief overview of what it would cover? Alright, so you know. so they they told us to look out for general knowledge. Okay. So what's happening in the news, what it's more or less to get to know your analytical skills, how you're able to solve problems in your own way. Not necessarily a law question. Of course, you have no knowledge on law yet. So it's general knowledge, probably something in the media. What do you think about it? What do you think some of the solutions can be? Okay. Something like that. Yeah. So it was essay questions. Yeah, it was an essay question. No objectives, nothing I like that. I don't remember something like you that. You can't remember no. any of them. Okay, so just essay questions on general topics. Uh, let's say media, like you said, maybe politics, politics or news, yes. things yeah. like that. Okay, and you were able to go through that normally without oh, yeah. any happenings. Well, um, it wasn't really challenging. No, but they have past questions for okay. the entry okay. exam. So if you are interested, you can come to the the faculty beforehand okay. and seek some of these these. Uh, okay, so the past questions are in your faculty in the yeah, library, the I suppose. Yeah, the reception. At the reception, yeah, okay, so, so you can just go and ask. Exactly, then they'll help you. Then you can make some copies and prepare okay. yourself for the entrance exam. All right. After the entrance exam, if you are picked, then you come for the interview. The interview. That one is also general questions. No, nothing, uh, nothing to scare you. Okay, but what do you think they were paying attention to? For example, in your interview, when you came in, is it that they were looking more at your behavior, body language, confidence, or they were paying attention to what you were saying about what they were asking? What what was that thing it, that it, it depends, but the general know? question everybody gets is why do you want to study law? Uh huh. And would you be able to pay the fees? Remember this is a postgraduate degree. Not a uh -huh. postgraduate degree, but you have a first okay, degree. Okay, you're a degree okay. holder. Yeah, you're uh -huh. a degree, degree holder. holder. Exactly. So, uh, and you're a fee-paying student. Okay. Yes. So just to clarify, we have the non-fee-paying students, the regular the students, regular and then students. the fee-paying students. Exactly. But for the regular students, they also have a fee-paying option. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. But for you guys, you are all fee paying. We are all fee paying. Okay. So, so you don't have any subsidized fee, nothing. No. No. <laughs> Not hey, to take. Of my knowledge, yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. So um, they will be asking you if you'll be able to afford mm -hmm. the fees. Exactly. So some of these questions are around and again questions in the media, politics. What's okay. your What's your thoughts? They'll look through your CV, ask you questions about that. It's a general interview. Nothing. Nothing to scare you. Nothing okay. Yeah. Sure. So what was your answer to the question? Why do you want to study law? If you well, can remember vaguely at least. Yes. So when I entered, I greeted them. That was the first question. I think that's oh, the first question for everyone. For everyone. Yes. So I gave them the background of where I'm coming what from. What you said to me. Exactly. You. So I did HR after after my first degree. I did my national service at Parliament, being inspired by working among members of Parliament. I'm working for a member of Parliament myself. Uh, I became inspired. I've, I've followed um, legal issues more closely and before you know remember I told you I wanted to read law yeah but I diverted at the point yeah. and came back so it's always been behind yeah. my thoughts that yes one day I would like to study law so okay yeah. so I suppose that was a good response since you were you were chosen exactly, exactly. okay so yeah. now this is quite a tricky moment because I found out something which was quite new to me apparently at King USD Faculty of Law, first degree holders study for four years. That's right. So guys, just to make this clear, <laughs> at Legon it was two years. Legon that's University of Ghana. It was two years. Yeah. Now it's three years. Yeah. And at King USD it's four years. Mm, whether or wow. not you have a first whether or not you have a first degree exactly. or you don't have a first degree, exactly. if you're coming straight from uh, SHS, it's four years. It's four years. And now you are in your third year. Yeah, I'm going to my third year. Now. Okay. And how many courses do you study per semester? So first year, as a, the regulars do additional courses mm -hmm. like literature, university required stuff. courses. Exactly, yeah. but for the part timers, which is the evening students, yes, we we did four courses in first year, five courses in second year, okay. and in um, third year we're going to do five courses again. Five courses. Okay, yeah. so this is so interesting because this system is exactly the same as ours okay. for undergrad. All right. This is exactly how we had ours. Oh, okay. That's as regular students at Legon uh, Law School. Mm. 
a school of law. <laughs> this thing is so confusing, honestly. <laughs> so I studied seeing five courses okay. first semester. Okay, for us it's five, 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 five. Just that um, in I think level 300 or level 200, you can add a sixth course. It's an elective if you want to or not but five is the minimum right. and most of the time five is the maximum because we didn't have enough courses All to make right. up electives right. but wow it means should i even say that for you guys your stream uh the course wasn't as challenging as for the uh, the guys coming straight from messages considering um, the number of courses uh, and the kind yes, of courses yes. you would say that I it's quite say relaxed that. yes fairly you can say that quite yeah. relaxed okay so Overall, right now, since you're in your third year, mm -hmm. what has been your experience, especially compared to your studies for your first degree? Mm -hmm. If you're comparing, you know, what can you um, say about it? Well, um, I know you, you know that law is an, is an intensive course. Of it's course. a jealous course. Yes. And so um, it's more like what you put in is what you get back. So, it, excuse me, I'm garbage in, garbage out. So if you're not close to your books if you don't read often if you don't read your cases if you don't brief your cases uh, it becomes a challenge so um, comparing it to my first degree which is on which was in uh, business administration um you would read it's more it's, they are all reading courses of course so you read and understand then you are asked questions but you know in law there's an iraq um, format you have to Look for the issues you have to discuss the law give your opinion that's the application then conclude so it's more like real life situation okay so yeah that's how it's like that's how different it is from uh, my first degree in business administration yeah. so the answering of the questions of course is different exactly. so your approaches to studies uh, exactly yeah exactly. but besides that okay you already mentioned that you would consider law a more intensive course as compared to business management yes yes definitely exactly exactly because we have um, groups we study in groups yes and sometimes you think you know it all <laughs> until you get to your group studies and everybody comes up with their own opinion then you notice uh, the law isn't a straight There's, jacket yes, it's exactly. not straightforward so i mean opinions it's just like um uh, a lecturer shared with me he, he said law is more like an elephant in the room okay so if you open the window to that room you see a different side of the elephant when you open the base window you see the, the foot of the elephant so it depends on where you're standing it depends on your perspective exactly so it's just a, a, a mixture of perspectives yeah sure okay and when you were speaking you also mentioned the fact that at tech um your, you guys have evening classes That's so right. if you hold a, a first degree it's automatic that you'll be in an evening class. That's right. That is from 5 p.m.? 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. To 9 p.m. It depends. Okay. So, if you have, yeah, so it's 5 to 7 p.m. Okay. Then the second uh, class is from 7 to 9. So your classes are separate from uh, the people who came straight from SHS. Exactly. Evening. They come in the morning. Okay. So you yeah. separate classes. Separate. You don't even meet? Do you meet in tutorials? Yes. We, we meet sometimes. But what do you think the rationale is for this? Is it to give you guys time to work? Or why, why are you separated? Or is it because of the class size? Not necessarily. I think the main reason is because the regulars are not workers. Mm -hmm. And the part-timers are mostly working. Most okay. Okay, so even you can find in a in a part-time class um, students who are not working, mm -hmm. but because they have their first degree already, they have to join the. So it's compulsory, even, compulsory. even if you want to be in exactly. a day. No, it's oh not possible. no, it's, it's not. Uh, you have to be a convincing reason. So this means should I assume that you are working while schooling? Yes, yes, I manage. I manage something small. Okay, so you have family. your own business. Uh, I want to say it's my business. It's a family business. Okay. Yeah, but I also do online marketing on the side personally. Okay. Yeah, so I, I, on, I market um, businesses, events, yeah, online for, for companies and service providers. Yeah. Okay. And how, how difficult is it to combine that with school? If you, I'm assuming that you should be working Monday to Friday or yes, it's, it's, it's flexible. Yes, it's flexible. It's okay. flexible. It depends. Okay. It depends. So you do have time for studies. It's not an issue. Oh, yeah. No, nah, nah, because it's flexible. Mm -hmm. yeah, because it's flexible. I mean, 
if you're working for say a private man that will be quite difficult yeah. because even when it's time for class at say 5 p.m he might give you another assignment exactly like, okay. but if it's flexible if it's uh, if you're a sole proprietor i mean it's quite easier that we can combine class you can have a short class before the main class with a few colleagues some, something like that yeah okay. but if you're working full time it will become difficult personally uh, it's quite flexible for me so yeah. i have time for studies i have time for group meetings sometimes during the weekend yeah. okay so that's how it's done. okay and you also uh, occupy the position of the faculty president that's which right. is a prestigious <laughs> position you guys should already know this by now mm -hmm. and it entails <laughs> a lot you yes. know managing the whole lsu that's and right. all that that's right. how does that come together with your studies does it help you would you say that it helps you with your studies maybe for example gives you the opportunity to meet more people in the faculty to interact with them to maybe even get group studies with them or mm -hmm. on the other hand it just takes up a lot of your time how, well, how does well, it gel with your studies well, it all boils down to time management of course yes. so you, you apportion time for everything you have planned for the day so i for instance if i wake up i have a to-do list so if I'll do this, I'll do that. And at the end of the day, I take what I'm able to do throughout the day. Um, we were voted into office right before the COVID um, break came. Okay. So we've been home, even though we've been voted for, we've been sworn in. We are still home at the moment. You haven't yet actually yeah. started. Occupied, the, yeah. yeah, haven't started real work yeah. since I've been sworn in. I have to make according to our constitution, some appointments, I have to see to some challenges, students, some of them live outside the region, so yeah. um, hostel issues, internship letters, stuff like that. If I'm around, yeah, I'm able to help some of the students. But real work will start next semester. I can see that you are quite, you know, the position holder, SRC president, law faculty president. What does your future look like for you right now? Mm. Are you seeing yourself more of a lawyer practicing law or you are thinking politics or you are thinking business how how does it look like for well, you okay so i would want to be a lawyer first and foremost but i would want to exhaust for now i have interest in public interest law okay yeah, public interest law. that's what i have interest in but till you exhaust all your courses in that's what i learned from one, one top lawyer that you, you have to exhaust all the courses and afterwards, they know which one probably are really interested, interested in. in. So for now, I'm saying public interest, or I could say real estate. But if I'm able to finish, the, for instance, a commercial law course, I'll notice that probably, oh, probably this is where my, my interest lies, okay? So it depends. It depends. I also have a knack for international law and international relations. So that's why um, I learned a few languages as well. So... Looking at that, probably in the international phase of leadership, probably yeah, that's where I will end up. What would be your advice to anyone who wants to study law with a first mm -hmm. degree at KNUSD Faculty of Law? So I'm talking not yeah. just the actual studies, but the application process as well. What would you say to someone like that? Since I'm a part-timer, advice I'll give to someone who is um, interested in studying law, either in UG or um, in Kenya University, any faculty of law in Ghana, uh, you should know the reason why you want to read law in the first place. So ask yourself why you really want to read law. If you know the reason why you want to study law and not because probably it looks good and everybody is, you find it fancy, of course, yes, but it's hard work. So if you know why you're reading law, you're motivated. And it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tough journey, I should say. <laughs> it's a tough journey. So if you are psyched up, it's more easier. Even in your downtime, probably you throw the paper or something like that. You know that um, I have to fail to get better. It gets better before it gets better. Stuff like that. You have to, <laughs> yeah, you have to psych yourself up for it. Yeah. So that's my advice to anyone who would like to read law generally. Yeah. So you have to be unique in your reason as to exactly. why. I your think uniqueness reason. is important, Very important because a lot of people will say prestige and money. But I mean, for example, for you, you have a whole story. 
that's attached to why you want to study exactly. law. And I honestly think that that's also very important, mm -hmm. especially at the interview, when you know you have something to say. Mm -hmm. It's not just, oh, my mom is a lawyer, that's why I want to be a lawyer, yeah, yeah. or money, or prestige. Yeah. Because, so, yeah. yeah, I'm mm -hmm. saying that because you might have your reason. If you have a reason, that's fine. But if you don't really have a reason, then you know, we are more following the crowd. Uh -huh. And if it's because of money, if you are motivated because you get money, you'll be surprised. We have lawyers who are not doing that well. Okay, so it depends on the niche you have for yourself. If you already have a first degree, probably you're using the law as a promotion or you're generally interested in law and the law of your country. Uh -huh. So some people uh, go through the part-time and they get their degrees, but they don't practice law. Yeah, so sometimes it's an attachment to what you're doing just to give you a broader perspective. Exactly. The, and I think industry. studying law makes you just a more educated person in general. Exactly. It's exactly. not about practicing nah, or, yeah, you know, yeah. people depends. are very different. Yeah, it, it just depends. depends yeah. So, Stephen, thank you so much. Oh, don't mention, don't mention. I really appreciate, you know, your time, your thank efforts. You. Thank you. Thank and thank you guys also for watching this thank video. You. And of course, for now, it's a goodbye, but I hope to see you in another video. So, bye. bye. <laughs>